Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and welcome to another action-packed artist trading card of the day video. <laughs> this is days um, 7, 8, and 9. Um, yeah. So, the first one that I'm starting with, I wanted to play around with washi tape and there's kind of a funny story about this washi tape. You know, I order a lot of stuff on Amazon and sometimes I put something in my cart and just just to see like how much it's going to cost because sometimes there's tax or whatever I throw it in the cart and then I don't take it back out and so another person in my family also uses my Amazon account and he just uh, ordered some some stuff that he needed and didn't take out this pack of washi tape. <laughs> so I hadn't intended to order it, but I did or he ordered it for me basically. So it arrived. I'm like, oh how fun. Black and red washi tape. It's a set. And I will um of course, just like always, put all the stuff that I used in the description box below with the links, most of them to Amazon. So I'll link this up for you. It's a cute set. I just, you know, I have a lot of washi tape already, as I'm sure all the rest of you do, and I I wasn't gonna order it I just wanted to see how much it was because it was so cute and then I ended up ordering it so what I'm doing is I have these uh, artist trading card size cut pieces of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and I'm using those for all my ATCs because it's a nice weight to do any type of a uh, technique or medium on and you know I do a lot of different stuff I mean it's never the same so um, because washi tape isn't as sticky as I was as I would like it to be, I'm using my Liquitex matte medium and I put it on the paper and then I put the tape down and then put it on the top so that I'm very sure that this tape isn't going to peel up at a later date, you know, when it feels like it. So I really was trying to get it good and stuck. And the one with the bl different black and gray ones is the one that's going to be my base and then I made a second one with the different reds to make another piece to put on top. So I'm using my new Memento Black Tuxedo Black pad to just go around the edges of that um, that washi tape piece and it never really dries so I end up having to kind of rub it down with a a paper towel to get it to dry to get the black uh, ink to dry and I think that's because washi tape is kind of plasticky um, it seems to have some sort of a plasticky finish on the top it's supposed to be made out of rice paper and I'm not I don't know I don't know this may or may not be authentic washi tape it could be fake washi tape so it might not be rice paper so I went around the edges of the heart shape that I cut out of the other piece as well and also went around it with my black Posca pen because there were still a few little white spots on the edges. You know, 140 pound watercolor paper is pretty thick and so I didn't um, get all the edges so I went ahead and used my pen. But you could just do it with the pad. I just didn't feel like getting it back out and going over it again. Then I put some foam tape. Um, just cut into small pieces on the back to make the heart pop up from the card uh, just to give it a little bit of dimension for fun and peeled and stuck that so then you have a red on black which is striking and it's something that I like red on black and black on red too so um, I was happy with that then I'm looking for something to put on there uh, out of my Tim Holtz chat stickers and find one. I was looking for one of the ones with the black background and the white writing and then I'm going to go around the edge of that with my white Posca pen and that will you know make it stand out from the card a little bit because it got a little bit lost down there in the corner with all that black And then to finish this off, all I'm going to do is stick some of these fun, clear stick-on gems. Um, that whole bag has a lot of different types of sequins and gems and things in it that I've gotten mostly from different people. There are some in there that I've bought myself, but most of them are from 
um, Happy Mail, and I've just grabbed out this little package, which is actually one I think I got myself. But I put a couple different sizes, and that's that's all there is to it. Sorry, <laughs> yawning again in the middle of a video. Oh my gosh. Okay, for the next day, I wanted to do paper painting collage. And the whole the whole thing was inspired by this scrap that was on the floor. I don't know why it wasn't in its box. It was on the floor of kind of this black paper with coppery colored and white and a very textured looking jelly print. And I thought it looked like the desert sand in the moonlight. And I had been listening to the coyotes this morning, or coyotes, however, however you want to say it. Uh, there's some babies. Um, there's this thing called a wash behind my house, which is a dry, a dry creek. And then in the monsoon season in July, it fills up with water. But uh, a lot of animals live down there. And there's some baby coyotes. Tees, coyotes, coyotes that go ow, 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 ow. they were so noisy so um, I decided to make a coyote uh, howling at the moon doing paper painting because that's what I felt like doing so I used a jelly print for the background and then I put that scrap that inspired me on and then I picked out one that had circular prints on it and was kind of yellows and huh, excuse me again those coyotes have been keeping me up <laughs> they're cute though I'd like to see them I don't ever see them I only hear them um, so yeah I put the moon on there and just like kind of tore it in a circle and then now I'm drawing the coyote on a piece of deli paper this is just a scrap of deli paper, and I'm using my Pentel Graph Gear 1000 uh, graphite drafted pencil. And I want to make it pretty dark, but I'm having a little bit of trouble with the legs. I'm still not happy with them. I'm not sure what I'm not seeing, but something is wrong with those legs. I don't know. But I finally finished my drawing and I'm just drawing it on the deli paper but I'm holding it over <sighs> man if I yawn one more time I'm gonna have to do this whole thing over again um, I put I put it over the card when I was drawing so that I can make sure that I didn't make it too large because if I had drawn it separately then put it on it could like not have fit into the space if you know what I mean do you know what I mean I don't know if you know what I mean so then I'm getting out some different scraps of browns, tans, oranges, rust colors, uh, those type of colors out of my color boxes. And I'm just going to randomly put little teeny tiny pieces of paper all over this deli paper, over the area where I have made the drawing. And I'm around the bottom part of it, I'm using darker colors because that's where the shadow would be from the body. If the moon was above, the shadow would be at the bottom under the leg, you know, on the legs and stuff under the body. And then the area that would be light colors would be at the top where the moon is shining off the fur on the head and the nose and the top of the back. So I'm kind of gradiating my color by putting the darker ones at the bottom and the lighter ones at the top. Although I think I do input, end up putting a pretty dark one right in the middle and I didn't even like change it. I <laughs> just like whatever. I wasn't that concerned. <laughs> so I'm using Liquitex matte gel medium. Not the thin stuff because I have a lot of different weights of paper plus I'm putting multiple layers and layering them on top of each other so I'm using the thicker paste to put those on I actually did the whole card with a thicker paste because that that inspiration paper is actually thick it's like almost a cardstock and then you know just lots of layers it's better to use the thicker paste 
So once I've cut that out using the, the lines, you know, I can see the lines through the deli paper. So then I cut it out from the back and attach it to the card. And then just to kind of make it stand out from the background a little bit, I'm using a dark indigo pit brush pen. These are the um, India ink markers that I have. And then also the dark sepia at the bottom. I didn't want to put the blue over the brown, so I use the brown at the bottom and the blue over where the sky is, just to kind of uh, make the coyote stand out from the background. And then I'm just adding a little bit of white highlight and blending it in with my finger using my white Posca pen, also adding some stars, and then also some splatters with that same ink to make more stars. I wanted some larger ones and some smaller ones, like it would be, you know, some would be closer, some would be further away. So I think my final thing is to draw in a silhouette of a cactus that would be off in the distance that you might be able to see and go around the edges. And that's it for this card. And we're on to day number nine. Today is day number nine and I made this this morning very early. <laughs> um, wanted to do some illustration. I felt like drawing a unicorn girl. I don't know why. I just did. Just because. So I'm starting out with my drafting pencil and soft graphite and drawing my whimsical girl face onto the card. This is still the 140 pound cold press watercolor paper cut into the size of three and a half by two and a half inches or nine centimeters by six and a half centimeters if you're doing it that way. Um, you guys can join in this this June challenge. There an, an ATC every day. Even if you haven't made one yet, you could start now. You could start on day nine or day ten. And all you do is make an ATC and then you post a photo of it on any social media using the hashtag ATCAD two oh one seven. And that's all there is to it. And you could um you know, share your artwork with us. So there's a lot of people participating. It's a lot of fun and there's a lot to see. So even if you don't want to play along, you can go and use that hashtag on Instagram or Facebook and, or YouTube for that matter. And you'll come up with people's artist trading cards. It's pretty fun. So once my sketch is done, I'm using my Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons and a little bit of white or titanium white acrylic paint to color her in. Um, I use the crayon and then I blend it out with the paint. It gives it a little bit more of a um, softer blend than just using the crayon alone. It kind of fills in the little bumpy spots on the paper and makes it softer looking. So that's what I usually do when I'm using these crayons. And I'm just using some pinks and skin tones. Uh, she's a Caucasian girl with uh, a unicorn horn growing out of her head. Just because. Don't judge. <laughs> I, I honestly do not know why I drew this. I just felt like it. It's a golden sparkly horn. And uh, it makes her magical. She's magical. Yeah. That's how it is. So just coloring along. Um, I decided to make the background a rainbow because rainbows and unicorns go together. So I'm drawing the crayon onto the background in stripes and then blending it with a little bit fatter brush. I have a fat flat brush for blending that and then I was using a very fine round brush with a soft bristle for doing the other parts. And I do want to say that if you are enjoying this video, to please, you know, you know what I'm going to say, <laughs> give it a thumbs up. Say you like it. Leave me a comment so I know that you're here. Um, subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bell because that's, that's the only way you're going to receive all your notifications. Not just mine, but all of them. 
they're you need to turn on the bell these days it's crazy and um, you know share the challenge share my video uh, get other people to join in because this is a lot of fun so once my rainbow my first layer of rainbow was done in the background I decided she was gonna have tealish aqua colored hair it took me some time to figure out what to do about the hair because I really didn't want to make it like black or brown or blonde if it was blonde it would blend in too much if it was brown it would be boring because you know my hair's brown and that's boring and purple I didn't I would have I thought about purple but then I had that purple stripe at the bottom of the rainbow so I decided on a color that wasn't in the rainbow which is this aqua turquoisey color and I'm kind of liking that color right now anyway so that's what I decided so I go back in and I'm deepening up the colors I want this to be really 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 bright like crazy bright so I add another layer of the Neo Color 2 crayon on there to um, try to make it super bright. I want the whole thing to be bright, like, so that your eyes are like, whoa, I need to close my eyes because that's so bright. <laughs> and I keep going back in with a little bit of the white paint and blending and highlighting and, you know, back and forth, back and forth, letting one section dry while I'm working on a different section. You know so then I think to myself I think I need to darken up the lines and I thought about using my pencil again um, because you know I could I could use that that the crayon is a little bit waxy and I can write over the top of it with a Posca pen because Posca pens write over anything but I didn't want that thick of a line because this is a very small drawing I wanted a very very fine lines and I don't have the ulti ultimate fine line Posca pin which I hear exists I hear there's one that's even finer than the one that I have I don't own it so I decided to sharpen up my Stabilo all pencil and use that to bring my lines back and then I'm using an extremely fine brush a liner brush to um, activate that pencil I don't want a bunch of black I just wanted a little bit more darker lines so that's how I did it I should get that other Posca pin. I just have to, you know, order it. I have to remember to order it. <laughs> so I decide to make her eyes the same color, that aqua. Um, I did have like a blue color in there, and then I decided to add the aqua. And when I did that, the Stabilo, um, you know, the black from the Stabilo got too much in there. I had to blot it out and then bring it back again with to the aqua color so darkening up her lips a little bit to bring in that red from the top of the card so I bring in this gold pin and uh, go ahead and color her horn and I don't know it just wasn't wasn't it, it was boring so I decided that I was going to make it even more intense using the color burst powders from Ken Oliver these are similar to brushos um, they're kind of the same thing a very very pigmented powder form of a water soluble pigment and I tell you what these things stain your hands like crazy my hands are so stained you would not even believe it <laughs> I can't get it off. I've even I've had a shower since then and everything and my hands my tips of my fingers are still blue and the underside of my arm. But these these are so intense and that's what I wanted. I wanted a really intense look, but they're also hard to control. They get all over the place. They poof out. They I don't know. Anyway, so I ended up getting some on her face where I didn't want it. So then I had to go back in with the uh, white acrylic paint to clean that up and then add in some more color. So pretty much the rest of the video I'm trying to fix up <laughs> the place where it got, where the color burst got out of control. But I don't delete this part because you need to see that 
everyone makes mistakes and they are fixable. It's fixable. She's not as perfect as she was, but she still looks good. So I put the white back over where the little speckles of powder have gotten on there. And then a little bit more of the skin toned uh, crayon. Back and forth, back and forth. Fixing it up, clearing it up. Um, the thing about the powder is that it's so intense that it will even come through gesso. Like it, it, it will come through white paint. So you have to kind of keep doing a couple layers of stuff. Intense stuff, I tell you, intense. So then my final thing was to do a few little white splatters and I think I went around the edges. I probably went around the edges. Did I? Let's find out. Oh, I wanted to put some glitter glue on her horn to make it sparkly. Uh, and I did add some to her eyes as well. Because she's magical. Magical. I think that's it for me. So thanks for watching. Your close-ups are coming right now. Bye-bye.